Chapter 71 Worry About Yourself Instead of Her You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 71 Worry About Yourself Instead of Her Nobody in Class A took Xiaoyan seriously. Even Liang Bowen and Xin Qingqing thought that she was too embarrassed to tell the truth because her grades were too poor. The rest of them got to work immediately. They had to score a few more points in order to pull the class average up for Qiaonyan. The time had come for the examination. The class's students got together and went to look for the examination venue. Qiaonyan took a look at her venue number as well. All star equals 1102 she thought it was far away, but it was just next door, in class B, I'm in 1204, and Liang Bowen and the rest are in 1605. Chao Nian, where's your venue? Shen Qingqing walked out of the classroom with her as they walked past class B, she asked Chao Nian as she seemed rather nonchalant, having received the slip of paper which showed her venue. Chao Nian crushed the paper and tossed it into the bin, then said a little mockingly, 1102, first seat. Shen Qingqing was stunned. Wasn't that in the first row of class B, her heart sank. She had prepared some cheat sheets for Chao Nian and planned to give them to her but it seemed like it wasn't going to be of use anymore. At this point, the students of Class B were also getting their belongings together and heading towards their examination venues. Chao Chun left the classroom with the company of Zhao Jingwei and all the other people who looked up to her. Zhao Jingwei glanced at Chao Nian and immediately said in her shrill voice, <laughs> Let's see, who's this over here? Isn't it Chao Nian, the one who scored full marks for the entrance paper? I heard that you want to achieve first place in this examination. <laughs> Class A is already in shambles, and now they're expecting someone who got in through the back door to be in the first place. Standing beside Chao Nian, Shen Qingqing immediately stood forward and said with a red face, Zhao Jingwei, you'd better stop spouting nonsense. I'm speaking the truth, how is that nonsense? With this deadweight around, Class A will have to surrender the most outstanding class title to us. Zhao Jingwei tipped her chin upwards, her posture domineering and arrogant. She was so loud that the Class A students walking past got mad as well. They were about to rebut her. Chao Nian squinted, the look in her eyes overtaken by a terrifying wildness. She reached out and grabbed Shen Qingqing, who was close to starting a fight with them. Chao Nian then looked at Zhao Jingwei coldly but a little teasingly. I will wait for you to come and get it. Get what? The most outstanding class title. Zhao Jingwei was confident and smug, but with Chao Nian's calm reply, she simply looked like an unreasonable shrew. She couldn't take it lying down, but at this point, Chao Chen grabbed hold of her and said gently, Enough, Jingwei. The examination is starting. Have you found your venue yet? Let's head there first. Zhao Jingwei was still mad and spat at Chao Nian and the rest of class A, count yourselves lucky. She then hooked arms with Chao Chen and kept her nose high. Chen Chen, let's go. Chao Chen smiled gently when she walked past Chao Nian and the rest. She said softly, All the best, sister. I believe you can do it. I'll be waiting to hear your results. Only after the two of them had left did Shen Qingqing reveal how disgusted she felt. What does that Chao Chen mean? Why do I feel like she's even more disgusting than Zhao Jingwei? It's as if she believes that you'll not do well. She claims that she believes in you. But if that's the case, she could have said all the best and left it at that. Why did she have to talk about waiting for your results? It was evident that she was waiting to laugh at Chao Nian. The preparation bell was about to ring, so Shen Qingqing didn't really have much time to say all that she wanted to say anymore. She patted Chao Nian on the shoulder and tried to squeeze an encouraging smile. Chao Nian, don't feel too stressed. No matter how you do, nobody's going to blame you. Just do your paper as you usually would. Chao Nian casually said, MM, I'll try my best. Chen Yuan, the last to leave the classroom, heard Shen Qingqing's words of encouragement to Chao Nian. His lips twitched a little, and he tugged Shen Qingqing's sleeve. Let's go and look for our own venues. She doesn't need you to worry for her. You might as well worry about yourself instead. Did Chao Nian really need these ordinary high school students to worry for her? Chapter 72 
Missed Call from the Hospital. You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios upon entering Class B, Chiao Nian realized that she was the only Class A student around. She didn't know anybody else at all. Everyone looked at her the moment she entered, eyes full of curiosity and some with mockery. Chiao Nian didn't bother looking at anyone. She prepared her 2B pencil and a liquid gel pen, placed them on the desk, and then took a seat. A while later, the invigilator arrived with the papers. First high school took the third year examinations very seriously. To prevent cheating, each class was assigned two invigilators. What a coincidence, the invigilators for this classroom were Chin Shi and another teacher she did not recognize. The whole examination would be completed in a day, with a morning paper and an afternoon paper. The one in the morning was mathematics, the subject most dreaded by students. The other invigilator was responsible for checking the student's candidate number against their seating position. Chen Shi stood in front of the class and scanned the students condescendingly, before landing her gaze on Xiao Nian and saying, All of you are first high school students and you should know the examination rules and regulations without me saying more. I will just briefly emphasize once more, so listen carefully. Cheating is not tolerated. Anyone found cheating will be banned from the examination and the results will be nullified. Also, my personal principle goes like this. If I find anyone cheating, I will report it to the school at once. Expulsion is possible for serious cases. Are you clear? Yes, we are. The students in venue 1102 responded. Chao Nian couldn't be bothered with her. Instead, she was busy checking on her 2B pencil. Those eyes were dark, pure, and beautiful, but they just were not looking in Chen Shi's direction. Chen Shi pursed her lips and kept her gaze. She then tore the envelope holding the papers and said, All right, we will start distributing the papers now. The atmosphere was tense. Besides the sounds of writing and erasing, it was practically silent. Chen Shi grabbed a chair and took a seat right in front of the first row once the examination began. She kept her eyes on Xiao Nian and Xiao Nian only. Given the way she invigilated, cheating surely would not escape her eyes. Hell, if Xiao Nian even made an odd move, she would notice it right away and catch her for a cheating. But Xiao Nian didn't look anywhere outside her paper since the beginning of the examination. She just flipped through the pages and answered the questions. Xiao Nian shaded the answers on the answer sheet with much ease. It was as if the questions that Chen Shi had scoured all over for were a piece of cake for her. Soon, Chiao Nian was done shading all of the multiple dot choice questions. She went on to the short to answer questions, then the open dot ended questions. Chiao Nian wrote very quickly and practically did not use her rough paper for any drafts at all. In less than an hour, she had completed the paper. Chen Shi thought that she would check through her answers, but to her surprise, Chiao Nian flipped the paper and kept it faced down, then put it aside. She then yawned and rested her head on the table, taking a nap. Ha! <laughs> she couldn't help but chuckle as she witnessed this scene. It was as if she had already won. For the next few papers, Chiao Nian acted the same way. She was the first to complete the paper and would put it aside without even checking. Then, she would sleep. In the blink of an eye, the four papers were over. The sun was already beginning to set. Chiao Nian packed her belongings and then casually bade her farewell to Shen Qingqing and a few classmates. Then, she leisurely walked out of the school gate. Her cell phone had been turned off the entire day. The moment she turned it on now, she saw ten notifications. There were missed calls, text messages. Chiao Nian narrowed her eyes as she looked at one of the missed calls, which was from the hospital. This was her personal cell phone, and she only gave this cell phone number to people she was very close to. But she remembered putting this number down at the hospital as an emergency contact for Uncle Chen. Her heart sank. Had something happened to Uncle Chen? Chapter 73 Big Boss, You're Exposed You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios After School, many parents drove over to pick up their children after getting off work. 
the gates of First High School were blocked by various cars. Frowning, Xiao Nian took out her earphone from her bag, walked through the crowd, and was about to call the hospital. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw a black phaeton parked in an inconspicuous corner across the road. Yi Wang Chuan leaned back lazily on the other side, his handsome face illuminated under the street lights. His eyes were deep, and a cigarette hung from his thin and gorgeous lips. His black shirt sleeves were rolled up to reveal the crimson prayer beads on his wrist. Though he was parked far away, his appearance stood out from the crowd and was very alluring. Chao Nian didn't want to walk over. However, he seemed to sense that she had come out and raised his head to look in her direction, coincidentally meeting her gaze. Chao Nian. Yi Wang Chuan didn't expect her to come out so fast and to see him smoking. Frowning, he quickly threw away the cigarette butt and stamped it out with his foot. Then, he turned and said to Gu San, didn't you say that the exam would take at least half an hour? Yes, it usually does. Then, why is Chao Nian out already? And she had even seen him smoking. Rubbing his forehead, Yi Wang Chuan was too lazy to scold him. He raised his hand and greeted the girl on the opposite side. The road wasn't very wide, and Xiao Nian arrived within a few steps. She just reached the car when she heard the man's low and sultry voice say, Uncle Chen met with an accident. Xiao Nian's heart jumped, and her face changed slightly. Taking off her earphones, she stared at him with black, cold, and ruthless eyes, like a wolf whose bottom line had been stepped on. What happened? Her voice was incredibly hoarse. Upon seeing her shoulders and back tense up, Yi Wangchuan knew that she was far from being as calm as she seemed on the surface. He turned and opened the car door, inviting her in. I'll tell you on the road, get in the car first. Along the way, Yi Wangchuan briefly explained the incident to her. In fact, it was very simple. In the afternoon, Uncle Chun suddenly felt nauseous and fainted for a while. The doctor performed an emergency examination and found that he had a tumor in his brain which needed immediate surgery. However, this kind of craniotomy required quite a number of doctors. Rao City was only a small city, and the level of medical technology was far from Beijing's. Suddenly looking for an expert to perform a craniotomy on Uncle Chen was like trying to reach the sky. Before the car arrived at the hospital, Yi Wangchuan glanced at her pale face. His fingers quickly turned the beads on his wrist, and he softly comforted her. I've already contacted the experts from Beijing's hospital. They'll be here soon, so don't worry. She had always known that Uncle Chen wasn't in good health, and he was paralyzed in bed all year round. Hence, she had asked the doctors to do a comprehensive physical examination on him every month, but she didn't expect them to encounter a brain tumor in him. Xiao Nian's face turned pale, and she leaned backward before shutting her eyes. Her black eyelashes were distinct, her lips were drawn into a straight line, and her hands were clenched into fists. It was the first time Yi Wang Chuan saw her so fragile and anxious. Afraid that her hand would bleed from her tight grip, he put his big hand on the back of hers. As if he was comforting a child, he whispered and coaxed her, Nian Nian, trust me. Uncle Chen will definitely be fine. The car quickly stopped at the hospital, and Chiao Nian almost ran up to the sixth floor. From a distance, she heard Aunt Chen's depressed cry and the voices of doctors discussing together. The patient has fallen into a severe coma. What can we do? We can't wait for the experts from Beijing to come over, so why don't we directly go to the higher dot level hospital? No, he can't be moved anymore in this condition. He can only operate as soon as possible. But who will do it? The scene was deadly quiet. The brain surgeons in Rao City were gathered here, but no one dared to come forward and say that they were confident. If it was another person today, they might not have been under such pressure and would have agreed to do the surgery. After all, there were successes and failures in operations. However, despite looking ordinary, this patient seemed to have a powerful support, and no one dared to bear such a responsibility. Aunt Chen waited with tears in her eyes for a full minute, but not one doctor volunteered to do the surgery. Her heart sank, and just when she was about to cry desperately, she heard a familiar voice from the end of the corridor. Me? Chapter 74 She's like a mystery. 
You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Everyone turned around to see an 18 year old girl running towards them. She was wearing a t-shirt, shirt, smoky gray jeans, and a pair of small leather boots that revealed her straight and well-dot-proportioned legs. She had probably just rushed over, as the fine sweat on her forehead hadn't been wiped off yet, and she was panting with her hands on her knees, her eyes burning like a wildfire. Let me. Aunt Chen stared at her in a daze, her mouth hanging open. Forgetting to wipe the tears on her sallow face, she exclaimed in surprise, Nian Nian. Behind her, Gu San was also shocked. He poked his head out, confused as to what was going on. He whispered to the man beside him, Master Wang, what's Miss Chiao doing? Was she fooling around? It didn't seem like it. Chiao Nian didn't seem like the kind to fool around. Although she was young, she was much calmer than her brother, young Master Jiang. She had no reason to mess around under such circumstances. But why did it sound like she was fooling around? She's just a high school girl, how could she possibly know medical skills? Craniotomy isn't the same as cutting open a watermelon. Look at her confidence, isn't she just messing around? Yi Wangchuan raised an eyebrow, closing his eyes and letting a chuckle escape from his thin and gorgeous mouth. Hehe. <laughs> Interesting he thought that Xiao Nian just looked different from ordinary girls, but now it seemed he hadn't mistaken her. She was indeed different. Xiao Nian was just like a mystery. When the female high school student told the group of brain surgeons in the top three hospitals that she would do the operation, everyone was stunned. Lu Yuanyuan, known as the most beautiful doctor in the brain surgery department, took the lead to break the silence. Sneering, she raised her chin proudly and sized her up. You. Some of our doctors aren't even confident, but you, a high school student, think you can do it. What if the patient dies, are you going to take responsibility? Xiao Nian stepped on the shadow of the corridor lights, wild and sassy. Yes, I'll take responsibility. Lu Yuanyuan raised her thin eyebrow, feeling a little annoyed. She said with disgust. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Take responsibility. Who are you to do that? Treating illness and saving people isn't like playing house, and you have to be capable first before you want to be a hero. The hospital doesn't even dare to be responsible for this operation, but you can afford to. What if I take responsibility for it with my life? Xiao Nian stood still in front of them, her hands in her pocket, her forehead still wet with sweat. She was still panting a little as she spoke, but arrogance and confidence exuded from her attitude. If I fail the operation, I'll pay for it with my life. Aunt Chen covered her mouth, shaking her head wildly and preventing her from continuing. Don't talk nonsense. What do you mean? You're still young, your uncle isn't worth it. We're not worthy enough for you to bet your life on it. Chao Nian's eyes were very beautiful, and their shape was peach dot like, with the tails raised like a phoenix. It made her look a little disobedient, and with her eyebrows raised at the moment, the bulge of her brow bone looked even more rebellious. She was incredibly wild. She helped Aunt Chun sit down on a chair, her eyebrows and eyelashes drooped, forming a shadow under her eyes. She said softly, You and Uncle Chin are worthy to me. Don't worry, I won't let Uncle Chen die. Red dot eyed, Aunt Chun grabbed her hand, choking and speechless. She didn't know what else to say, except to repeat the words, Nian Nian, we're not worth it. We didn't do anything for you. Xiao Nian straightened her back and reached out to wipe away her tears. Don't cry. After coaxing her, she turned with her hands behind her back, her eyes wild and determined. It's unrealistic to transfer to another hospital and continue to wait. We don't have a second choice now, so let me give it a try. Chapter 75 Sister Nian's Genius Doctor Cover-Up You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios This was a matter of life and death, so how could a layman high school student give it a try? Just as Liu Yuanyuan was about to speak, the director of brain surgery suddenly stopped her and said, let's give her a try. Director. Liu Yuanyuan thought he was crazy. Was he crazy? 
Brain surgery was the most difficult of surgical operations. Many surgeons might not dare to perform craniotomy even after 10 years of practice. This patient's situation was extremely complicated, and apart from a 3.cm.long tumor in his brain, he had been paralyzed in bed for many years, and his health couldn't be worse. How could they let a high school student operate on this kind of patient? She felt like she must be dreaming. The director of the brain surgery department was extremely firm. Seeing the fanatic light exuding from Chiao Nian's gaze, he pressed Liu Yuanyuan's shoulders and firmly said, None of us can do the operation, but I can't wait for the Beijing experts to arrive either. His gaze fell on the girl not far away. If it's her, we might have a chance. He had once seen her saving someone, and he had even felt ashamed of his skills after seeing her skillful medical techniques. Liu Yuan Yuan. Dot. I'll take responsibility if anything happens. The director had been in the industry for more than 30 years and was ranked in the province for his achievements in brain surgery. If even he didn't have confidence for this surgery, how could he be so sure about an outsider? And a female high school student. What was this girl's origin? Since the director had already spoken, even if the other doctors were skeptical of Chao Nian, they still busied themselves preparing for the surgery. Gu San watched as everyone started busying themselves in an orderly manner, and Chao Nian followed the nurse to change into a surgical gown. He finally closed his hanging mouth and turned to Yi Wang Chuan with blank eyes. Master Wang, Miss Chao is really going to operate on that man. What if something happens, she? She was too daring. Yi Wang Chuan remained silent and quickly fiddled with the Buddhist beads on his lower wrist. Call the Beijing airport, tell them that I want them to arrange a plane for their medical staff. I want the fastest speed. It's best to skip the security checks. Gu San looked up in surprise but didn't see the slightest hint of insincerity in his eyes. Realizing that he wasn't joking, his heart sank. It was okay for Master Wang to invite an expert in brain surgery over from Beijing since there wouldn't be much movement. However, letting the airport arrange special planes and take privileges such as omitting the security check was a big deal, and many people in Beijing would certainly divert their attention to Rao City. But he never questioned Yi Wangchuan's decisions, and he simply nodded solemnly. I'll do it right away. He quickly walked away to call the relevant parties. Yi Wang Chuan walked through the noisy corridor with his hands in his pockets and stopped in front of the crying, sallow.faced middle.aged woman. He bent over and patted her on the back, comforting her softly. Aunt Chen, don't worry. Uncle Chen will be fine. Looking up, Aunt Chen saw a young man through the tears in her eyes. For some reason, her turbulent heart gradually calmed down. It was as if this man whom she had only seen once really had the ability to pull her man back from the gates of death. Uncle Chen had fallen into a severe coma and had very unstable vital signs. He might stop breathing at any time because of the tumor in his brain. Thus, the operation was scheduled very soon. Chao Nian put on the sterile surgical gown, pursed her lips, and stared resolutely ahead. She entered the operation room, surrounded by several brain surgeons. The operating room lit up with a red light. Chapter 76 Director of Brain Surgery is Chao Nian Support You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Liu Yuanyuan also came in with a large group of troops. She was completely covered in a surgical gown and stood with a group of brain surgery doctors. Chao Nian could see the doubts in their eyes through the protective cover. But she didn't care and quickly put on the surgical gloves. Weak people like to ride on others' coattails and question those they were unfamiliar with. Those who had seen the vast world outside knew how big the world was. Not having witnessed something before didn't mean it was unreasonable. At this time, the head neurologist came over, ignoring his colleagues sitting on the sideline. He directly asked Chao Nian, Do you want me to help? Yes, please. Hand me the instruments beside me. Okay, I'll cooperate with you. Just tell me what you need. The head neurologist didn't feel like there was anything wrong with being a second to a female high school student. It was reasonable to him. The other neurologists exchanged glances, all thinking the same thing. The head neurologist is crazy. 
More than crazy, his behavior had completely stunned everyone, and they couldn't understand what he was doing at all. Not only had he agreed to the absurd request of a female high school student, but he had also assumed that she was really an expert. Wasn't Xiao Nian just a high school student who hadn't grown up yet? She hadn't graduated from college, but he had been the chief doctor of a tertiary hospital for decades. Why would he act as a second on the operating table? Lu Yuanyuan and the others couldn't comprehend his actions. They followed them to the operating table with suspicion, reluctant to lend a helping hand. Chiao Nian concentrated on the operating table and first checked Uncle Chen's condition, her eyes darkening. The brain tumor had compressed the blood vessels, and his chronic anemia had led to malnutrition. His internal organs weren't well, and he wasn't ill, but because he had been lying on the hospital bed all year round without exercising, hematopoiesis of the heart was extremely poor, and he had some minor liver problems. With his current situation, he had his two legs hanging on the edge of the gates of death. The reason why he hadn't died yet probably had something to do with the meat Ganoderma. Otherwise, the hospital would be notifying his sudden death instead of his critical illness. Curved vascular clamp. Someone passed the instrument to Chiao Nian, and she used the forceps to clamp the blood vessel rupture, cutting off the tumor in the brain. Her movements were smooth and without any unnecessary movements. Watching her undergo an operation was like watching a perfect performance. The neurologists originally thought she was just messing around, and the head neurologist was playing along with her, but they now stared with widened eyes in fixation. What kind of a joke was this? A female high school student was more skilled in craniotomy than the doctors in the top three hospitals, and she was even performing the operation at such a tricky angle. There was no mention in the book that a craniotomy could be performed at that location, but with careful consideration? That location was actually more accurate than the common craniotomy positions that they had learned, as it caused the least harm to the patient. Tissue shears. Chao Nian's voice was incredibly hoarse. Today, she had a highly challenging exam and an operation, and she hadn't drunk a sip of water all day. The people watching her intently in the operation room didn't think of wiping her sweat or giving her water. Uncle Chen's condition was too bad and even if she tried to feed him a small pill before the operation, his heartbeat continued dropping. Give me the surgical forceps. The head neurologist burst into fanatical light, chasing Chiao Nian's every move during the operation. Lu Yuanyuan exclaimed, watching Chiao Nian remove the tumor attached to the meninges, intact. This? How was she a high school student? This highly challenging surgical technique was unheard of. Chapter 77 Holding On You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 77 Holding on the sweat from Chiao Nian's forehead dripped down her chin. She took out the tumor with a pair of tweezers and placed it on a plate, then prepared for the next suture. The difficulty of suturing was no less than the difficulty of removing the tumor. A slight deviation might cause the operation to fail and the patient to die. Outside the operation room. Gu San had already answered several calls and was continuously reporting the progress of the Beijing experts to Yi Wang Chuan. Yi Wang Chuan didn't seem worried about Miss Chiao and continued comforting Aunt Chen from time to time. During the phone call, he heard that all hospitals were talking about the high school student's surgery, and even the two nurses passing by were discussing if the brain surgeon was crazy. Gu San felt distressed. Seeing that it was dark outside and there was no movement in the operating room, he leaned into the man's ear with a worried expression and whispered, Master Wang, it has been four hours, and Miss Chiao is still inside. Miss Jiang is still in Rao City. She's a high got achieving student in the medicine department. Should I pick her up? She might be able to help. It wasn't that he didn't believe in Chiao Nian, but she was too young. Although Miss Jiang was also involved in the entertainment industry during college, she was smart and had good grades. As a student in the medicine department of Tsinghua University, she was better than Miss Chiao no matter what. I believe in her. Leaning against the wall, Yi Wanchuan's tall and slender body looked like a male model, but his whole body revealed an unpleasant aura. Even if his eyebrows were lazily hanging down, it still gave a sense of threat like a lion dozing off. Even if the lion was asleep, would you dare to touch the lion's ass? 
Gu San looked indescribable and couldn't hold back anymore. Master Wang, what if? I'm not cursing Miss Chiao, but what if she really fails? Wouldn't it be better to have someone replace Miss Chiao then? Yi Wangchuan glanced at him a little lazily, and he said indifferently, You mean Jiang Xian is better than the 30 year old doctor in a tertiary hospital? Gu San felt slapped in the face, and he awkwardly rubbed his nose. I didn't mean that. I just, Miss Jiang was more powerful than Miss Chiao no matter what. He had a good relationship with Chiao Yen and only thought about this without saying it out loud. Yi Wangchuan changed his posture and lowered his eyes to play with the Buddha beads on his wrist. His expression was faint and very tough. Even if she fails, she still has me, doesn't she? Gu San was speechless. What the f asterisk CK was Master Wang putting Miss Chiao into his circle of protection? As they talked, the lights in the operating room suddenly went out, changing from red to green. The family members sitting in the corridor stood up and ran inside. Chen Yuan grabbed the first doctor who came out, afraid of hearing bad news. His face turned blue out of anxiety. Doctor, how is my father? Master Wang, the doctor is out. Gu San also noticed the commotion and felt hopeful. I wonder if the operation was successful. It would take a while more for the experts from Beijing to arrive. If Miss Chiao really failed this time, then Master Wang had to clean up the mess. Gu San always thought that Chiao Nian was a good girl, sensible and worry up free. But at this moment, he couldn't help but resent her for being too willful in this matter. Yi Wangchuan's eyes deepened, and he put his hands in his pocket. His handsome face was expressionless, but it was much calmer than Gu San's. Let's go over. Was Master Wang really not anxious? Gu San saw that he completely believed in Xiao Nian and followed after him, feeling anxious. Chapter 78 Master Wang's Indescribable Sense of Pride You are listening to the novel at fametv.com Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios The head neurologist took off his surgical mask. His shirt under the surgical gown was completely soaked but it wasn't just that he was tired. He was simply too excited and agitated to be able to witness the state of dot the dot art skills as a doctor. He couldn't stop smiling. Success, the surgery is a huge success. I believe that even the greatest specialist from Beijing wouldn't have been able to pull it off so well. Gu San was confused. What? A success. Miss Chow had successfully operated on Uncle Chen, and even won the praises of the head neurologist, saying that even a specialist from Beijing might not have been capable of this. This was, incredible. What exactly is Miss Chow's past? Since when did she have a medical background? Gu San turned around to look at him and asked, Master Wang, did you actually know about this? Yi Wang Chuan smiled as he lowered his gaze to hide his dark and deep eyes. He did not seem surprised. I don't know. Gu San was speechless. He didn't know. But he was so confident in Miss Chow just now, asserting that she surely could do it. That's not possible. Miss Chow must have told you beforehand. Ha! <laughs> Yi Wangchuan's eyes were deep and distant, and he sounded like he knew Chiao Nian very well. She cares about Uncle Chen's condition way more than you do. If you aren't willing to take it lightly, she definitely wouldn't be making this decision without full confidence in herself. If she says she can, that surely means that she's over 80% sure of the success. Otherwise, she would rather have waited for help to come. Even so, he hadn't expected Chiao Nian to be this good. So much so that an expert couldn't stop praising her. Yi Wang Chuan had no idea why, but he felt pride rise inside him. It felt better than being complimented himself. The head neurologist said, the patient is out of the woods now, he doesn't even have to be warded in the ICU. He will be transferred to a high dependency ward, and if his condition stabilizes in the next few days, he can move into a normal ward then. Chen Yuan and Aunt Chun were delighted and heaved a sigh of relief. They couldn't stop thanking the doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, everyone. Then, they followed the nurses to the high-dependency ward. 
neurologist Liu Yuanyuan and the rest came out from the operating theater as well. Their expressions resembled Gu San's. The difference, however, was that they witnessed the surgery procedure by Qiao Nian with their own eyes, so they appeared more awed and also shocked. Liu Yuanyuan had the strangest expression amongst them. Even though nobody noticed her now, nor did they remember what she'd said previously, her face was warm and red. It was as if she was stepping on nails, she simply could not bear to stand around here any longer. She hurriedly said to her colleague, I'm not feeling well, I'll go back first. Sure, drink more warm water. She was a renowned belle among the doctors in this city, and male doctors were usually all over her. But Liu Yuanyuan wasn't in the mood to be proud now. She quietly took her leave and avoided everyone. Master Wang, Miss Chao is out, Gu San said quietly. Yi Wangchuan locked his gaze on the last girl to exit from the operating theater. Chiao Nian took her surgical gown off and tossed it into the bin. She was exhausted and could barely lift her arms. Then, she felt a shadow loom over her. Who was that? Chiao Nian was beat, and she wasn't in a good mood. She furrowed her brows impatiently. Uncle Chen's surgery was extremely successful. Aunt Chen and the rest have headed there. Chiao Nian looked up and saw Yi Wang Chuan. She was immune to his looks, having seen his face every day. She looked up tiredly and said weakly, M.M. I know. She was the one who saved him. She knew better than anyone else how successful the surgery was. Chapter 79 Sister Nian is annoyed with the flirting. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios' Uncle Chen's life was no longer in danger, but his current condition wasn't too optimistic yet. She still needed something. Once she got hold of it, she would be able to set his bone right and he would then stand like a normal person again. But the thing she needed was rare and hard to obtain. She probably needed the Red Alliance's help. Chiao Nian was completely drained, and even raising an arm was too much to ask of her. But she was still busy thinking about finding the item. All of a sudden, she felt her feet leave the ground. She was picked up horizontally. Uh... The distinct masculine scent hit Chiao Nian, and her instinct was to avoid it. She struggled to be let down. What are you doing, put me down? She thought that she still had the condition of the past, such that she would break out in rashes on her neck and elbows whenever someone of the opposite gender came into direct contact with her. But when she looked down at her arms, she realized that they were still fair and clear. There was no trace of a single rash. None at all. How did this happen? Chao Nian stopped struggling for a moment as she tried to figure it out with her already exhausted mind. That wasn't possible. In the past, she would have rashes whenever a guy touched her or even come too close. It happened even with Wei Lu. But there were exceptions. Chiao Nian recalled Jiang Li and the Jiang family. She hadn't broken out in rashes when they touched her, but that was likely because they were related to her by blood. What about him? This condition had bothered Chiao Nian for many years and was one she could not treat herself of. She had gone to several dermatologists, but they said that this was not a skin problem per se rather, her rashes were a manifestation of her psychological aversion to males. That was why she had to take medication to control her emotions. Yi Wang Chuan was the only adult male unrelated to her by blood who did not trigger her allergic reaction upon touching her. This had happened when they were by the bridge the previous time, but she thought it was just a fluke. But if that was the case, how did she explain this instance? Xiao Nian took a deep breath and her eyes went dark. But it was just a few seconds of emotional shift on her part and Yi Wang Chuan did not notice it. He simply held her waist tightly and closer to his body. He smiled and said in the same low, soothing, and captivating voice, don't move about. I'll carry you to kitchen's room so you can take a nap. Chiao Nian was speechless. His bedroom is big and the bed isn't too bad. His grandfather had it customized for him in Beijing. Have a rest. Gu San blushed as he followed behind them. He dared not even let out a fart. Master Wang, you do know that little young master's bed is his most precious territory. 
Elder Yi had it specially customized for him, and he never allowed anyone on it. Little young master did like Miss Chiao, but what if he wasn't willing to let her have the bed? He dared not even imagine the scenario. He felt that if it happened, little young master might just be kicked out of the room by Master Wang. Xiao Yen was simply too tired to fight him. She held onto his shirt and remained stiff, but quietly agreed. Her ears were burning up. And her heart was a little messy. It was only two stories between level 6 and level 8, so Yi Wang Chuan took the stairs. They attracted many glances as he walked around with Xiao Yen in his arms. The man's facial features were outstanding, and his tailored pants were wrapped around his two long legs, emphasizing his impressive physique. The girl in his arms wasn't too bad herself. Just from the side profile, one could tell that she wasn't too fanciful, but she was definitely not a plain Jane. A handsome man and a beautiful woman would always be attractive, no matter the time and place. A few girls blushed as Yi Wang Chuan passed by them. They whispered, Wah, it's so romantic. This feels like a scene from a drama. And the man was so handsome. Did they just bump into actors shooting a film around here? Gu San heard it as well and turned to look at the people before him. TSK Master Wang and Miss Chiao do seem pretty compatible. Chapter 80 Really Like Chiao Yen. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios in the VIP room on the 8th floor, Yi Kitchen was curled up in bed like a kitten, eyeing a little jar on the pillow. He didn't even blink his eyes as he gazed at the jar, his lush lashes curled up beautifully. There was a white tablet in the little jar he cherished so dearly. He just looked at it with a sweet, silly expression the whole time. He would pick it up once in a while and take the little tablet out, but he wouldn't bear to eat it. Then, after looking at it for a while, he would put it back into the jar. He was counting down to when Xiao Yen would come again. It had been almost a full day, and she hadn't come yet. Yi Kitchen sat up with furrowed brows on his little face. He thought about his performance that day. Perhaps he wasn't obedient enough. His eyes dimmed a little as he picked up the jar. He felt worse by the minute as he thought about how it was probably his fault that Sister Chiao Yen did not want to come and see him. Then, the door opened. He turned around to see his uncle carrying Chiao Yen in. Yi Kitchen practically jumped off his bed as the look of self.reproach dispersed. His beautiful eyes lit up and he beamed widely, unable to contain his excitement. He called out, Sister. Yi Wang Chuan glanced at him and said quietly, not so loud. He said to the child, she's tired, Chen Chen. Could you let her have your bed so she can sleep for a while? Xiao Yen rubbed her temple as she struggled to get down. She said hoarsely, no need, I don't need to sleep. Just let me rest on the couch there. Yi Wang Chuan narrowed his eyes and did not respond. He was looking in Yi Kitchen's direction. She just finished a surgery. She had to stand for four straight hours. This was obviously meant for Yi Kitchen to hear. Gu San was standing at the door. Little young master wasn't willing to loan his bed. I, little young master had always been very aware of his territory. Master Wang was asking too much of him. He peered inwards a little worriedly and was ready to prepare another ward for them. He thought he was right. But just after a moment's hesitation, Yi Kitchen said, sure. He then took his stuff and got off the bed, and even thoughtfully tidied his bed that he'd made a mess of previously. Yi Kitchen blushed a little as if he was shy as he stood by the bed, his hands wrung together. He said, Sister, I, I didn't know you were coming, had he known, he would have gotten his uncle to change the sheets and get the best pillow for her to rest comfortably on. Yi Kitchen seemed a little frustrated at himself. After some thought, he pouted and stuffed her his favorite plush rabbit. This is my favorite when I sleep. It's very obedient, and it can protect sister. Yi Wang Chua knew about the plush rabbit. It was the stuffed toy that he had gotten for Yi Kitchen for his first birthday. Yi Kitchen usually kept it close to him and hardly shared it with anyone. It seemed like he really liked Chiao Yen. He bent over and placed her on the bed, then took off her shoes and socks. 
he pulled the blanket over her and said, have a nap here, we'll go back later. Xiao Nian was forced into bed and even had a blanket over her already. She looked up at him, slightly annoyed. Yi Wang Chuan placed a hand on her forehead and closed her eyes. Sleep. You need rest now, so don't think of anything. We'll talk when you've rested enough. 